How do I know if my bag of M&Ms is fair? First, I have to decide what fair means, but since I guess I'm the one asking the question, that's pretty easy. I think a bag of M&Ms is fair if it contains an equal number of all the different colors. A bag is unfair if it has too many or too few of any particular colors. Next, we're gonna have to decide how we're gonna measure this bag. And there's a pretty straightforward method for doing this. I'll pour out all the M&Ms onto my desk and I'll group them by color. When I'm done, I'll compare the number of M&Ms in each group. It looks like they're about equal, which means that this bag is fair. Awesome, hooray. Let's do another one, and this time I'm gonna learn from my mistakes. Instead of pouring them all out onto the desk, I've got these nice little bins that I can throw each color into to keep them from rolling around. That'll make it much easier to gather them all into groups. So I'm done sorting the second bag, mostly, but I have a problem. There are these two colors of M&Ms that I've never seen before. I'm not sure where they came from, but they're in the bag and they have a little M on them and everything. I'm running out of containers, so I guess I'll just leave them in here for now. But let's count the other ones up. It looks like we've got pretty equal numbers of orange, red, yellow, blue, green, and brown. But what about those other ones? There's only like seven of them which, you know, isn't that much different from the rest, but it's not really fair to count them as the same color, right? Because they're not. So, okay, we have three tan ones and four white ones, and obviously this bag isn't fair at all. Wait, what about that first bag? There weren't any white or tan M&Ms in that bag at all. We thought it was fair when we counted it the first time, but it's actually even worse than this one. What do we do? If we keep discovering new colors of M&Ms, how are we ever supposed to know whether any given bag is fair? If we find out tomorrow that there are actually tons of purple M&Ms out there and we've just never seen one, does that mean that we've been enjoying unfair bags of candy all along? At this point, you may have guessed that this video is not actually about M&Ms. It's about fairness. It's about what happens when we make assumptions that make it difficult for us to see whether a situation is fair or whether it just looks like it's fair because we don't know any better. This has come up a lot in my life recently in the form of survey questions, particularly ones asking about sensitive topics like ethnicity, sexual orientation, and gender identity, which is what I'm gonna focus on. These surveys often claim that their goal is to achieve or to maintain diversity, to make sure that a particular organization or group is treating its members fairly. However, all too often, these questions look like this. And this is understandable. Just like lots of you have probably never seen a white M&M before, lots of people just aren't very familiar with the idea that not everyone falls into one of the convenient checkboxes of male and female. In the last few years, transgender and non-binary people have become more visible than ever before. Some people aren't comfortable with that idea, and that's okay. There are lots of things that make me uncomfortable, like spiders, but it's not the spiders' fault that they creep me out. I can't pretend that they don't exist, and I certainly don't think it's fair of me to squish them on sight just because I don't understand them. It has become very clear that gender is not a binary. The bins that we've set up to categorize people into one gender or another were created by a world that assumed there were only two genders, by people who had probably never even heard of a trans or non-binary person. Now that we realize gender is more of a spectrum than a multiple choice question, these bins just aren't good enough anymore. It's not just insulting to people who don't identify as male or female, it's actively preventing us from seeing and understanding the diversity that already exists in our communities. If you ask a question like this, how do you expect to ever find out how many people you're ignoring for the sake of convenience? How will people tell you that you've missed them if their only options are to lie about their gender identity or to stay silent? 
The funny thing is, there's an easy solution to all of this. Just throw out the bins. Just like we can't assume we already have bins for every possible color of M&M when we open a new bag, we can't assume we already know all possible gender identities of the people we're surveying. Because if we did, we wouldn't really need to survey them in the first place. If you want to ask what someone's gender identity is on a survey, you should be prepared for them to tell you anything they want. Because that's how gender identity works. Everyone gets to choose. But before you panic about how hard it would be to process a survey where everybody gets to write in their own freeform answer, let's go back to candy for a minute. Clearly we need better candy sorting methodology. We can't just assume there will always be six convenient colors to sort the M&Ms into, but how can we count them efficiently if we don't know how many bins to use? This is where the magic of technology comes in. It turns out computers are actually really good at determining whether two things are functionally identical, in this case, two M&Ms. I can write a computer program that will go through every single one, making a list of every different sort of M&M that it finds and keeping track of how many there were of each type. What I get out of that process is a lot more manageable, a dozen or so unique types, each of which has a number telling me how many of it the computer found. Why are there more types than colors? Well, the computer noticed something I didn't. Some of these M&Ms have peanuts in them, and some of them have peanut butter in them, so they're not really identical to one another. But remember how we defined what makes a bag of M&Ms fair, though? We care about color, not filling. All we need to do is group the unique types of M&Ms by color, and then add up the number of times the computer counted each type in each group. That tells us how many of each color were in the bag. No bins required. Finally, we can say that, to the best of our knowledge, our bag is fair. And maybe tomorrow we'll find out that purple M&Ms are a thing, and we'll realize we've been missing them all along. But that's okay. We can change our categories. We can add new ones. We can notice our mistakes and try to do better. And that, I, I think is what fairness is actually about.